Comrades, I am Admiral Andre, and I greet you again. No, it is not a voice from the grave, although I have been away for a long time, I still am here. Today I want to play Geopolitical Simulator 4 Power and Revolution. I think there's actually an update coming for Steam, uh, where they update this for 2019. It's already available for Windows, but it's as far as I know, I looked a few days ago, it was still not available for Steam yet, so we'll be playing with the 2018 version. But that's alright. I remember I uh, recorded or tried to record an episode about this game a long time ago, but it didn't really gel very well. It wasn't working, so I never went ahead and uploaded it. But today I want to try again, and I have an idea. Now, usually my games if, uh, in, in Power uh, and Revolution end very badly. Uh, this is a very fickle game, and it's full of bugs, as you will see from the Steam reviews. But still, I don't want to discourage you from trying it, because I think it actually provides us a very uh, in-depth and detailed political simulation, and it's probably one of the closest experiences you can have to rule a country uh, in a game. So let's try it. I'll show you various features as we go. So uh, also I should just add I do have the 2018 update for this game, it's a DLC and also the Garden Spy DLC which I highly recommend. So let's go to World Simulation and New Game. And also I'll add the music that you hear in the background is of course not from this game, that is from Tropico 1. And to be honest Tropico is modeled largely on Cuba and that is the country I want to play today so that explains the music. Hopefully there won't be complaints from uh, Calypso or any other of the publishers of Tropico's music but we'll see. I think it's much more exciting to have this music than the in-game music. So, uh, I want to play as Cuba, but I don't want to play as the Castro uh, dynasty, basically, or uh, any of the current leadership in Cuba. Of course, this will be in the past now, so uh, just keep that in mind. So it's not going to be the free mode rulers. It's also not going to be the free mode democratic opponents, because there are no democratic opponents in Cuba. So it has to be revolution, of course. That's my favorite. After an unprecedented wave of restrictions on liberties, the people are grumbling. Become the leader of a terrorist organization, exciting, and uh, not in real life, of course, and lead the revolutionary movement to overthrow the current authoritarian regime and establish democracy. Now, how much democracy we actually establish is another story. That is up to us once we take power. So... We just keep that in mind. Now, there's only 43 playable countries here because obviously this does not apply to democracy, uh, whereas with the free mode uh, democratic opponents, you won't find Cuba because there are none. So, revolutions. And I leave all of this on default. Uh, as I said, this game is very fickle and it's very difficult already, but just keeping it on the normal uh, settings is usually the best idea. You can put it on beginner, but then you get some extra advice and things, and I don't know. I don't like that. Let's just keep it as it is. Now, usually you can select the currency of the particular country that you're playing as well, but it's not available for Cuba, so we'll leave it on dollars. It's also more easily understandable anyway. So we say plus here and there is Cuba and we get some information on the country here. Now of course this is not going to be all reflective of reality, so keep that in mind, but still it gives us a good idea. So in the game we are a people's republic, authoritarian and communist, of course we're fighting against that. The population is 11 million, uh, let's just see anything else, there's only one region in the game uh, for Cuba, so it's going to be quite straightforward, we won't have to invest in different regions once we take power. GDP is $62.3 billion, uh, share growth is 1.3, unemployment is 1.4, it's very low, inflation is 4.4, it's not awful. 
currency there you see that's probably the Cuban peso I'm not sure actually I'm not familiar with the Cuban currency but you can see it's of course not on par with the dollar I can say the same for the South African Rand debt ratio is 31 percent of GDP which is not bad so I think we won't have to face too much of a challenge there depending of course on what the deficit is GDP per capita the army and so on of course this will not be reflective of real life they have to make some simplifications in the game so we'll say okay now we have to pick our illegal political party of course this is where the fun happens and there's only one option the Cuban Democratic Action now in the game they change the names of all the politicians and the parties obviously to protect the game developers so this is just the democratic forces in Cuba and uh, of course we'll be leading that now for some reason we start out with a lot of fighters and a lot of money as well even though it's on medium difficulty but I won't complain about that we have four and a half million supporters in Cuba so almost half of the population actually we have 10,000 uh, fighters which is a very good number no mercenaries no armed pickup trucks and no tanks of course but we have an investment budget of quarter of a billion dollars almost which is fantastic I guess Cubans in the USA and the US government have been helping us there so we have three options to pick from this will now be me uh, the character so of course I don't know if these are based on real world figures but the names will be different Javier Chiles Alvaro Coques and Vicente de la Ra now I don't know if these names make any sense but I don't know any Cuban names that I can suggest so we'll be going with Javier Chiles this will be me date of birth is 1972 but that doesn't really matter I think that's still relatively young so I can still have a long rule in Cuba so there we are I'm not going to change the name but you can do it there so let's proceed loading data it is fitting that the people be guided and not instructed now we'll do more instructing than guiding I think but Hello, we'll see I am your special advisor your appointment as head of the organization is a real boost to the cause I want to quickly go over three main scenarios ahead we could try and overthrow the current leadership through a popular uprising we could launch we'll an just attack listen. on cities to try to establish an autonomous state or we could negotiate with the authorities to become a legal party and run in the elections good luck right so this is our private secretary I'll just listen to these messages one time and then in the future times we will skip them now of course some of this stuff is uh, very reminiscent uh, if you've seen my playthrough I can't even remember the full name of the game but it was the, the race to the White House where I played a I think it was an independent party or something it wasn't the Democrats or the Republicans I think I haven't checked but I'm almost certain it was the same developer that made that game because uh, the pictures look the same and all of that so this is ever some I'll just have a look after I record but I'm sure it's the same developer right let's pause immediately so this is the map of course uh, if you're not familiar with the game there is Cuba now it's red because it's an enemy of us we're an illegal organization you scroll with the right mouse button and yes of course the whole world is here not all countries are playable unfortunately you'll see there's even the small ones like Andorra and even the Vatican City is here of course it's more inside Rome but that's the only way they can show it there San Marino is actually a friend to us but you can see them there as well so that's one thing I like because if we remember real politics doesn't have these very small countries I think also they don't have Kuwait but Kuwait is in the game here don't know if you can play as them I'm sure you could probably play as Kuwait so there is uh, our country and of course if we just have a look on the map now as it is at the moment we'll see the green countries are the ones that like us now the democratic forces you see the USA is not completely a fan I'm sure they're still reeling from the Bay of Pigs but anyway 
Canada loves us, most of Europe loves us, even Russia. China hates us, absolutely. Uh, some of the more questionable regimes in the Middle East also don't like us, and even Italy and so on. Very strange, but oh well. Venezuela also hates us because they're friends with the current regime. And Mexico is also not a friend. Now if we have a look here on the bottom, this is also again reminiscent of uh, Paradox games, where you have your various map overlays. So we can look at the strategic map, but this is not reflecting our organization's relationships. This is the current Cuban regime. So you'll see the current Cuban regime is a big friend of Venezuela. They're an ally. Also China, uh, Vietnam, Laos, uh, Iran, Syria, and Belarus. So more of the dubious club of nations, but anyway. And Canada and the whole of Europe and Australia hates them and most of the rest of the world is unfavorable. So let's go back to the normal map. So let's just have a quick look at uh, Cuba. So there we see Havana, of course. There's several military bases dotted all over the map. Matanzas, Santa Clara, Santa Clara. There's the city of Santa Clara. Camagüe, I'm not too sure how you pronounce that. Holguin, Santiago de Cuba, and Guantanamo. And there's, of course, the US base as well. They're just reflected by an actual base there. They don't actually hold territory here. So, what do we do now? There is my uh, information, and there is uh, the head of state, Juan Bravo. Now, of course, this is not his real name. That would be Raul Castro when he was still in power. He is now, I think, the general secretary of the party, but the president is somebody else. But here he is still the president. And his popularity at the moment is 50%, which is maybe surprising if we consider that. Well, maybe it's not surprising because almost half the people support us. So I guess that explains it. We have a 40% popularity rating at the moment. But this is not so important when you're a, an illegal organization. This will be more important when we get into power. Right, so what else can I have a look at? I think we'll just play for now so that the messages come up here. And I think might there be another one. Let's just look at this one. This is our army general, uh, Felipe Getitos. I'm not sure. Hello, I am the general in chief of your armies. I will update you on the military situation in the field as soon as possible. As far as strategy is concerned, I would strongly recommend that we move position frequently to avoid being spotted by the enemy. I would also like to talk to you about securing the network, a vital measure to prevent espionage attacks. Right, so that's good advice. I, th I think I prefer it like this instead of with the easy mode where you have a professor sitting right here offering his advice. So uh, I think this works quite well. So if we have a look, we have five options on the bottom here. You have many more when you're in power, of course. So we are limited by our illegal status. But if you're opposition, you have very similar choices as well. So here we see the information of the country. There is President Juan Bravo, who is the enemy of the people, and we will make sure to depose him and give him the justice he deserves. He is appointed by the single party, the Grand Communist Party of Cuba, and he has a mandate length of five years with no limits, but of course there's no one to oppose him. Authoritarian, communist, national day is 10 December. Next elections are only in 2023 and it's 2019 now. So actually this does update to the current year if you're playing the uh, revolutionary movements. But of course, Castro is not the president at the moment. Then we have the second tab. This is our uh, finances, our funding. So our current investment budget that we have available is... 246 million dollars and we can do three things with that we can fund the securing of the network which i'm going to do right now 
we can find an infiltration cell. I've done this before, but I've never seen anything happen uh, relating to this. Maybe I just haven't played long enough. We can also launch a communication and recruitment campaign, which is very important to get more fighters. We'll do that now also. So let's put some money into this securing the network. So securing the network consists of a series of control measures and precautionary steps to protect the network from infiltration, in particular from foreign agents and spies, but really what they mean is from the government here. They could bring down part of our a part of uh, bring down part of or the entire network or locate armed units and camps if the organization has them. We don't at the moment. The risk of being infiltrated grows as time goes on. The more the network grows, the greater the need for securing it. I'm gonna put 10 million bucks into this. We have the money. I don't know what you should invest here, but 10 million sounds pretty good to keep the government spies off our backs. Right, next one, launch the communication and recruitment campaign. We need new fighters. I am going to put 25 million into this. We have to be quite aggressive. We have the money and we need the, the actual manpower. The aim of communication campaigns, namely flyer distribution, unofficial fly posting, social media campaigns and so on, is to raise public awareness to the organization's cause and convince supporters, namely the four and a half million people, to join the organization and fight alongside its troops so they become new troops. The campaigns will have a greater impact if they are spread out over time. This is true for almost everything in the game. You want to be very judicious with your actions and very patient. If you don't have patience, this is not the game for you. So keep that in mind. We don't want to do this too often. But we're starting the game now, so I'm going to do it. And uh, I'm sure we'll draw a couple of thousand people. Confirm. Right, so these percentages are just the amount that you've spent so far. So most of it has gone for communication. Let's find the infiltration cell. I'm not sure if this will happen anytime soon, but maybe we'll get lucky. If members of the organization are able to infiltrate the powers that be, they could come into contact with influential people and decision makers. A successful infiltration depends on the time spent, there's the ticket, the level of authoritarianism, which is very high, and the secret services, and of course the amount of money invested. Honestly, I don't know if it's worth putting money into this because there is such a high level of authoritarianism and... The government is so entrenched, it's going to be very difficult to infiltrate them. But maybe we'll put 50 million on this. I've never put so much money on it, so maybe that's a key difference, because they do say the amount of money has an impact. So we're going to put 59 million on this. I'm sure we can bribe someone. And that's all we can do right now, here. We can do higher mercenaries and weaponry, but that's in another window. Right, so this is our armed forces. You can see our current investment budget has dropped significantly. So, at the moment we have no mercenaries and we have no rockets. The rockets is actually very important because we'll be facing tanks uh, in various battles, even if we take the shortcut, which I'll talk to you in a moment about. So, we're going to need this. Uh, for some reason, you can only get a thousand at a time. You see the bar is maxed out and you can't go any more than that uh, at one time. Also, the same with the mercenaries. We can only get two right now and each time it doubles after that. So, let's do that. This will cost us 1.6 million bucks. Confirm. And it will take some time for our smuggling networks to actually make this happen. So... That's why maybe it's a good idea to do this in steps. Not to put the targets or the objectives too high in the beginning. Wait until the actual figures catch up to it. We have no tanks, no armored trucks, no helicopters, nothing. But we do have money, so let's get something. Let's get some armored trucks. This is of course very popular with terrorist networks and so on, like ISIS and all of those networks. So maybe we can also make use of that. But this product cannot be delivered. You have no base or camp. I think it's the same with all of them. 
Yes, so we can't make use of that. Just confirm and close. Now this is where the problem comes in. Like I said, this game does have many bugs. And unfortunately there's a big one in the sense of the revolution in Cuba. If we have a look here under our actions tab, one of the things that we can do is to launch an uprising in a city and enter into an armed conflict. This is actually the only way, I think, that you can start putting bases and camps on the map. But the only city that's available is Havana. And this is a big problem because I've seen other playthroughs where, and also I've done some experiments on my own, where if you play in another country and you're a, an illegal organization, you usually have more cities to choose from. But if we choose the capital and we go and fight with our 10,000 troops in the capital, we will win the game. That's it. It's the shortcut. You know, or at least we'll win the revolution and we'll get into power. But there's no way for us to break out of the capital without taking the whole capital over, which includes the bunker of the president. And when we do that, we become the government. The old government will fall. But we have to do that in order to uh, enable us to move our troops out of a city and then onto the map to build camps and all of that. So that is a big problem. However, there is a way around that that I have found. We have to launch our uprising in Cuba and at the same time, if you go to this tab and you then click uh, launch an uprising in a city, it will give you the option to launch in Santiago de Cuba. Now the problem with that is most of your troops are automatically assigned to Havana and you will have only a small handful of troops in Santiago. Now I can still win that battle, I have tried that. And then having done so, having taken over the whole city because there's no government bunker there, we can then start moving troops onto the map and put up some camps and then go from there. I think that's probably the, the approach that I'll take this time. The last time I did that I lost the game almost immediately because once you appear on the map the Cuban military can start attacking you and if we have no tanks, no armored vehicles then we're in big trouble but you can't get those if you don't have a camp. So it's a catch-22 I'm afraid. The easiest way is to just launch the revolution in Cuba or in Havana and take it over and win. Then it's over. But that's a bit gamey for me. I don't like that. I want us to move around and run and hide from the army and set up ambushes and things like that. It sounds a lot more fun. So keep in mind, if we die very quickly, then that will be the reason why. So let's not yet launch a invasion of a city. Now we can launch a protest action. Uh, I don't know if this is a good idea at this time. If you're playing in a normal democratic opposition, you'll wait for the government to do something that's unpopular before you do this. So maybe we'll also wait. Actually, the better approach would be to encourage someone else to start the protest for us. And then we can see how the government responds. Then the other option is to start the process of standardization. This is where we will become a legitimate party that can compete with the government in elections but this is Cuba that will never happen and that's not what we want we want to overthrow these oppressors of the people so that's our choices there the last tab here is where we can interact with various characters and various other political forces in the world for example political parties you'll see nothing because there's only the ruling party and we can't engage or meet with them legally. We have the unions, there's only one union which kind of makes it easier. It's the Union Alliance leader and they have 161,000 members or sympathizers. But still, if the government does something that the union doesn't like, we can encourage them to go on a protest and that's something that I'm going to do. So I think let's schedule a meeting with Gerardo Alguiso. We'll do that tomorrow even. 
it's a good idea for them to get to know us. Right, the next tab is or button is the associations in Cuba. This is something like the pacifists, the black and white communities, the women rights association, anti-racism and all of that. We can meet with these people as time goes on. I'm not going to set up meetings at the beginning. They'll all be pretty much neutral. Hmm, the family committee actually likes me. How much? 462,000 sympathizers. Let's meet with her then. Actually, on the same day as we meet with the union. Uh, handicapped rights. Just see if there's anyone else who is receptive to our ideas. Not at the moment. That's fine. Religious, there's just the Catholic community and they are dubious as to us at the moment. Sects, there are no sects. Now, this is where we get into our foreign affairs, basically. As if you're an illegal organization, you have obviously limited means to have foreign affairs, but there are ways. So at the moment, we know two diplomats overseas, one in Belize and one in Liberia, and we want to meet with them. So I'm going to schedule meetings with them. Can I do it the day after? Doesn't look like it. Let's make it on the Friday. Actually, I could have. I should have just clicked OK, but that's fine. Then the same day we will meet with the diplomat from Liberia. So these are, of course, diplomats. They represent the governments of those countries. Then, I think on the Thursday we can meet with the foreign networks. These are the illegal networks in other countries, just like we are in Cuba. So this is the Gambia Democratic Forces leader, and they are also considered a criminal, well, formerly a criminal, but uh, they're just like us. They're the opposition. You can still see the symbol there. So they are definitely an illegal organization. So we will meet with them tomorrow morning, or the day after tomorrow. And let's just return to categories. Then we can also meet foreign political parties. Now these are not the leading political parties in these countries, I believe. I think these would be like opposition parties, because otherwise the government would be represented by the diplomats. Let's meet them actually on the Saturday there. And then see if we can get any help or support for our cause from these people. These are the only ones that we know right now, but we can ask them to introduce us to other people and then build our network. Right, so that's basically all. Uh, we have other tabs here like the military map. Here you will see the various bases but we have no data on how many people are in them or tanks and all of that we don't know comparative maps you can get a lot of information here but for a an organization like us this is not really relevant right now here you can see all the various things let's look at security military power so Cuba is 38. That's not terrible, actually. It's on par almost with Singapore. So we are going to face quite a fight if we actually confront the military face to face. So what's next? The economic map? Uh, now is this like economic relationships? I think so. But this is not really relevant for us. Of course, you also get the infrastructure map. I'm just showing you this so you have an idea if you're not familiar with the game. I think this is supposed to show like... Just shows the cities at the moment, but like your economic or your industrial resources. Let's go to full map. Yes, your infrastructures and energy. Now, of course, we are an illegal organization, so I'm sure we don't have access to all the information there. But for the most part, we'll just use the normal map or the military map. Now, comrades, uh, having said that, here you can also see a comparison of Cuba with different countries or like the overall data as it changes over time.
but I'm not actually going to play now. This is just the first episode to set up our our uh, quest here to overthrow the government and to just introduce the basic mechanics of the game. So I think we'll do our meetings uh, in the next episode and see what we can do from there. I don't want to rush it or do super long episodes. It's not practical at the moment. Uh, but just, again, you see I am here and then at least uh, it's evidence, you know, proof of life as they say. Uh, of course, I know I should be making more Kerbal Space Program videos, but that will come in the future again. Don't worry about that. But right now I'm just really in the mood for more political kind of games because it ties in with the work that I'm doing in a way. Anyway, so comrades, I'll see you next time. And uh, if you're interested in this game, don't be too scared of the negative reviews on Steam. We'll see some bugs and some, you know, difficulties like we've seen now with the uprising map. We only have the choice of Havana. But there's ways you can get around that. You can still have a fantastic experience with this game. Now, if you are experienced with it, please do leave me some tips in the comments below. Uh, and I'll incorporate them in our forthcoming episodes, in our forthcoming military campaign against the Cuban forces. So that's it. Have a fantastic day and week, comrades. I'll try to do another episode in this week because it's short. I'll keep it short. It'll also make it more possible for me to do more regular episodes. So that's it. Farewell, comrades from Cuba.